He looked beyond all of my faults and so my needs. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for you and for me. How marvelous that grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond all of my faults and he saw my needs and great is thy faithfulness oh great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all I have needed, your righteous hand has provided. And great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Good evening. I grew up as a prayer of the Sonny Baptist Church on the north side here in the beautiful city of Jacksonville, Florida. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule this evening to be with us in our daily worship experience. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the blessing of this day. Thank you for keeping us throughout this day from danger, sin, and unseen. And allow this opportunity, God, to worship you in spirit and in truth on this evening. We pray, God, that you will speak to us and speak through us. Have your way with us and in us so that you can be praised and you can be glorified here on earth. Save, heal, deliver, and set the free. Let your word go forth, God, and accomplish what you have established it to do. Touch the lives of your people. Let us be better believers, better Christians from studying and teaching and the work of your word. Bless us and keep us. Thank you for the great Macedonia Baptist Church. Thank you for each member individually in our church collectively. Pray you continue to bind us close together in Christian love so you can be magnified through our church here in Jacksonville, Florida. Touch all that's watching. Touch each family that's watching. Touch each person that's watching God. Bless them with the blessings they stand in need of. We'll be able so careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that the words of our mouth and meditation of our heart may accept in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, good evening. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to tune in and worship with us virtually this evening on this Wednesday evening as we study the Word of God. This month of July, we have designated the month of prayer. So as we continue on those lines, we'll be coming from John chapter 17. And then also recorded by John, the beloved disciple, chapter 17. And tonight, we'll look at verses 1 through 10. In John chapter 17, beginning at verses 1, and concluded at the 10th verse. The King James verse of our record like this. These words make Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also might glorify thee. As I have given him power of all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self and the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou hast given unto me. Given me on out of the world, thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. And have known surely that I have come out from thee, and they have believed that thou didn't send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For thine are th they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I'm glorified in them. As we continue on the theme of prayer for this month of July, on this first Wednesday, the month of July, we'll talk from this title, this title, this theme. What Jesus prayed about. What Jesus prayed about. 
First of all, in verses 1 through 3, the first thing we see what Jesus prayed about, he prayed about the goals of the Father. He prayed about the goals of the Father, verse 1 through 3. But then in verses 4 and 5, he prayed about the glory of the Father. He prayed for the glory of the Father. And then last and finally, verses 6 through 10, he prays about the grace of the Father. He prays about the grace of the Father. The goals of the Father, verse 1 through 3, the glory of the Father, verse 4 and 5, and the grace of the Father, verses 6 through 10. What Jesus prayed about. A journey through John's majestic gospel, one would encounter, encounter many glorious portraits of the Lord Jesus Christ. You would see his heart of compassion on display as he heals the sick. You would see his power revealed as he raised the dead, fed the hungry. You will see his grace revealed as he saved the sinner. Every portrait that each chapter gives to us is an encouragement and a for a blessing. This chapter is no exception. When we come to chapter 17, we find ourselves standing on holy ground. In these verses, the Holy Spirit of God gives us access into the Garden of Gethsemane. As Jesus, pours, as Jesus pours his heart out to his heavenly Father. Now it must be noted that in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 12, that this is that's the model prayer. The model prayer in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 12. Here in John 17, we find, we find the Lord's prayer. The Lord's prayer in John 17. The model prayer in Matthew 6, 9 through 12. We'll deal with Matthew 6, 9 through 12 this coming Sunday. On this, the last night of his earthly life, of Jesus, or the last night of the earthly life of Jesus, he is found serving as our great high priest, making intercession with the Father. In fact, the Bible declares him to be our great high priest in Hebrews 3 and 1, Hebrews 3 and 20. This is the, this is the, the lowest high priestly prayer, his high priestly prayer. As we look into these verses and listen, you know, on the prayer of a wonderful Lord, please understand that what Jesus prayed about that night in the garden still impacts your life and mine on this day. His was a prayer that had power then and will have power throughout the remainder of time on to eternity. With all that in mind, allow me to share with you on this evening those things that were the focus of the Lord's prayer in the garden. What we will learn is that there, there's a lesson here about prayer and several lessons about the Lord's weasel for his people. By, by the way, this is a very encouraging passage. This passage is encouraging. When you stop to think that on the eve of his death, Jesus took the time to pray for you and to pray for me. I find that pretty encouraging. Please join me now in these verses we encounter what Jesus prayed about. First off, he prays about the goals of the Father. Verses 1 through 3, he prays about the goals of the Father. When we pray, we too should be like Jesus and ought to be praying for the Father's goals to be accomplished in and through our lives. And he prays about the goals of the Father. Look what he says in verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Jesus' the most, foremost goal was to manifest in the earth the person of the Father. Between him as son and God as Father was an indissolvable relationship. The prayer that the Father might glorify the Son was a prayer that there might be a fuller display of the Son's true and his divine nature. Now understand that the Lord did not lay aside his deity when he was incarnate in flesh. Rather, he put it aside, he put aside his glory. He didn't lay down his deity, but he put aside his glory. He had restricted himself to be and behave as a man, a man as God always intended a man to be. What people saw when they saw Jesus was an extraordinary man, a uniquely gifted man, an attractive, kind, loving man, an astonishingly good, perfect, and sinless, but he was still a man. But now the hour has come, Jesus said. It was this focal point in time that his way had led every that was leading him ever since past eternity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit had decided to inaction in creation and consequently, consequently in redemption. Some may ask, what hour has come? 
Well, there was an hour upon which he must be betrayed and be accused by men, a curse of God. It was an hour of curse and crucifixion. He on him every indignity, and God heaped on him the burden of all human sin and guilt, even so he might be glorified. It was the hour that had come, the hour that he was born in Bethlehem. From it was that time for the glory of the Father to shine. In the sun, look what the text says in verse number two. As thou hast given him power of all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Verse three. And this is life eternal, that they, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Jesus has shown power of power over the fish of the sea. Whether they were in the school as an individual, he had the power to get them into nets. And brought corns in through their mouths as he commanded. He had shown power over the beasts on the earth. Mark tells us that in his temptation he was with the wild animals in the wilderness. Mark 1, verse 13. When, when he rode into Jerusalem in his triumphant entry, he did ride on an unbroken coat. He had shown power over the fowl of air. The cock crow, not a fraction of a second too soon or a moment. Too late, Jesus, just at the critical moment to remind Peter's conscience and recover his faith. Faith, power over all flesh, however, refers to primarily all human flesh, over all humankind and all his weaknesses, sinfulness, and trouble. It was God's plan that the first Adam should have power and authority invested in him, that he should rule over this planet. <clears throat> but we know the first Adam failed in the garden. But the second Adam being fortified in the garden. The first Adam failed in the garden. The second Adam was fortified in the garden. The power that the Lord is speaking of is power to give eternal life. It shows us God's plan for sovereign redemption. It is the Spirit of the Lord that brings us into eternal life. Paul said, not works should any man boast. The Bible declares that the Spirit leads us to repentance. So we are in Christ because of the Spirit that brought us to Christ. We cannot have a relationship with God without accepting Jesus Christ. So Jesus first prays about the goals of the Father. The goals of the Father is to lead men into salvation through him. But then, then in verse 4 and 5, Jesus only prays about the goals of the Father. But Jesus prays about the glory of of the Father. He prays that the Father would be glorified through him. Our prayers are not only deal with the goals of the Father, but our prayers ought to deal with the glory of the Father through us. Look what he says, I have glorified thee on earth, have finished the work which thou hast given me to do. Verse number four. The goal of the Lord was not only to manifest the person and power of the Father, but also manifest the purpose of the Father. The Lord summed, summed up the divine purpose in his coming to this earth, from, from the incarnation to the ascension, the Lord Jesus glorified his Father. He finished the work entrusted to him. Even with the most critical part of the work ahead of him, the Lord has already put it behind him. Even though the agony of the garden was on him strongly, he's already put the work behind him. The garden would not shake his resolve or the indignities and the injustices that he's about to face being led from judgment hall to judgment hall. Though the horror of Golgotha and the silence of the grave were stepping, were stepping stones on the predetermined way, Jesus understood that for God to get the glory, he had to go through some grief, some gloom, and some sorrow. The Lord would carry the divine purpose out to fulfill what was never in question. His obedience would stand the test. He, he could speak in the past tense. Because it was God, it was as good as done. Jesus could speak it in past tense because Jesus was faithful to do what God had called him to do. Jesus was committed to go through what he had to go through to, so that the Father could be glorified. My brothers and my sisters, we have to be committed to the purpose and the plan and the goals of the Father so that he can get glory through us and from us. Look what he says in verse number five. And now, Father. Glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So, so, so far, the world has seen him only as an incarnate son. Now, let the, now, let the world see him as an infinite son. This, this is a glory beyond the brightness of the noonday. A glory more splendid than the rainbow in the sky. A glory not 
in this world, inherit in the Godhead, before which the shining one strike, um, strike like in Isaiah 6 and 2, a glory that blinded Saul of Tarsus in Acts 9 and 3. It's a glory which laid the apostle John prostrate in Revelations 1, 17. This, this was the glory Jesus put aside when he came to earth. The Lord was asking for pristine glory, the glory he shared with his father before he spake the world into beginning. It's a glory that God told Moses, no man could see his face and live. It's a glory that changes anyone that comes in contact with. See, there is no way you could be in the glory of the Lord and stay the same. So Jesus is praying so that God's glory can be revealed. My brothers and my sisters, when we pray, our prayer lives should encompass that the glory of God is revealed in our lives so that the glory of God can be revealed in our lives to change those that we come in contact with. We also want the glory of God to be so real and relevant in our lives that when we come in contact with other folk, they can feel the very essence and the very presence of God. We got to pray for the goals, but we also got to pray for the glory. We got to understand the goals of the Father. That he uses us to reach those for Jesus Christ. We've got to understand that our lives are to be purposed and planned by the Father so that he can get the glory out of our lives. So Jesus prays for the goals of the Father in verses 1 and 3. 1 through 3. But then Jesus prays for the glory of the Father in verse 4 and 5. Then last and finally, Jesus prays. For the grace of the Father, verse 6 and through 10. Verses 6 through 10. He prays for the grace of the Father. My brothers and my sisters, we got to understand that we are all recipients of the grace of God. We are recipients of the grace of God, His saving grace, His sustaining grace, His superficial, supernatural, natural grace, His superlative grace, His supreme grace. We are recipients of the grace of the Father. We are who we are because of God's grace. God's grace. God's redemption at Christ's expense. God's grace that wakes us up in the morning. God's grace that starts us on our way. God's grace that keeps cover roof over our head and clothes on our back. That is the grace of God. Unmerited faith. We can't work for it. We couldn't bother for it. We couldn't do anything to earn it. It's only given because of God's mercy. God's grace. Okay, he said, I have testified, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known all, known that all things which some of thou hast given me are thee. All the people looking to God by virtue of the fact that he is the creator. Some, some belong to Christ by virtue of the fact he is a redeemer, and they have believed in him. All people belong to God because God is the greater, but then some uh, belong to God because Christ is the Redeemer. They have accepted the truth about the Father, and His Son came to reveal that receiving salvation makes us the gift of the Father through His Son. We speak of a gift fit for a king. We struggle and wonder what to give someone who seems to have everything. What about a gift for God? God who can speak and angels appear bright and shining and fair as the morning swift and strong and gifted and eager to serve a gift for the one who can speak a world and a hundred million galaxies can the spirit appear. What's the gift you ask? It is you. It is you. It is you. Jesus says, whatever the Father has given him, he has given to the to given to the gifts the Father gave him. That's what I like about the Lord. He holds nothing back from us. He said, God, you gave them to me, and now I give them back to you. Look at verse 8 and verse 9. He For I have given unto them the words that thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I come out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine, in verse 10, are thine, and thine are mine, I am glorified in them. Jesus says that he gave the words that the Father had given him. They, and, and they surely know that he came from the Father and believed that the Father has sent him. He cared for each and every person with a compassion that was even in the work as he was taking each step closer to God. Jesus prays for his followers. Jesus 
Praise for those that have committed to follow him. Jesus says his followers are complete in him. Jesus said that he would be glorified through them. See, our desire ought to be one that not only do we see the glory of God, but that we would be conduits of the glory of God. Not just that we just see the glory of God, but we'll be conduits of the glory of God so that others can see his glory in our lives and thus their lives can be changed. So we think about what Jesus prayed about. We've got to understand Jesus prayed about the goals of the Father. When we think about what Jesus prayed about, we've got to understand that Jesus prayed about the glory of the Father. But then when we think about what Jesus prayed about, we understand that Jesus prayed about the grace of the Father. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this time to share. We thank you for your word. Because your word is a lamp unto our feet. Your word is a light unto our pathway. We ask you, oh God, that your word will, will, will fall on good ground. That it will germinate in our hearts and grow. And we'll become even stronger, more mature, believers in our walk with you. So you can get even more glory out of our lives. As we understand your goals and give you glory. And we walk in your grace. Bless us now and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're watching this, even if Lord Jesus Christ is a personal Savior, the Bible says in Romans 10, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, and God raise him from the dead. You could be saved. Please reach out to our church office and con contact us through our DM. If you're already saved, but not united with a local church, the Hebrew writer said, don't forsake assembling yourselves together. You can be part of a Bible teaching, Bible believing church. That's what Greater Macedonia Baptist Church has been for years. A Bible teaching, Bible believing church. Reach out to us so we can help connect with you, help you grow in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Then lastly, you can be a backslider. Jeremiah says he loved the backslider so much so he's married to the backslider. Revelation he says the door hard not to you. If you'll come in and suffer, if you open the door, he'll come in and he suffer. So we offer these three invitations to you. You may then go through the system. Please reach out through our DM or contact our church office so we can help you grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Let's not forget on Friday. On Friday, every Friday in the month of July at 9 a.m., we read Psalms number 30 and we pray and fast from 9 to 3 p.m. 9 a.m., Psalms 30, 12 noon, Psalms 35, and at 3 p.m., Psalms number 40 as we fast and pray in this month of July as God leads us to greater heights and deeper depths in him. Don't forget you can watch us again live on Sunday morning virtually through Facebook, through Instagram or through our church website www.gmbcjacks.com So now it's time for the benediction. And now he was able to keep us from falling, able to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy to the only wise God our Savior be the majesty, dominion and power. Henceforth now and forevermore we all say Amen. God bless you and keep you. It's our prayer.